Hello Kules, welcome back to Viva Barca and welcome to the home of everything Barca where we are going to be discussing on some interesting updates. We start with sporting director Matteo Alemani who have recently explained Aubameyang, Coutinho and the Griezmann sales. We are going to be discussing on what he said as we progress. Then secondly, talking about Frankie Leo as Jean Laporta um, spoke about him recently. Barcelona decided to keep the player despite big money offers from the Premier League, according to what Laporta is claiming. We are going to be discussing on that as well. So guys, before we get right into the story, please do ensure to subscribe if you haven't. If you are just coming across the channel for the very first time, you are highly welcome. Consider liking the video and please watch it right up to the very end. Barca, Barca, Barca. FC Barcelona have been one of the busiest teams in Europe as far as market activity is concerned. Over the past few months, Barcelona have overseen a major squad overhaul in their quest to restore the club's lost glory. One of the most important figures in helping Barcelona undergo this change was Matteo Alemani, the sporting director. His negotiations coupled with his masterful business strategy have helped the club prevail in pursuit of several top players across the summer. In a recent media interaction, Alemani has opened up on a few of the player sales as well, including Antoine Griezmann, who is poised to join Atletico Madrid on a permanent deal. Alemani also praised Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, suggesting that the Gabonese international was the only player whose sale affected the club negatively, as he said. The only player who left this summer but who was important for us sportingly was Aubameyang. We sold him because it was a great business opportunity and we did it for the financial fair play too, he said. Alemani offered his thoughts on the sale of Griezmann and Coutinho as well. The Barca sporting director revealed how important the sale of these two star players could be in terms of helping the club balance their books, he said. The departures of Griezmann and Coutinho have generated huge savings in wages it is important, but it's a very important valuable um, than what Atletico and Villa paid for us. Their salaries are prohibitive, so I value these operations very much, Alemano said. Alemani's comments come in the midst of speculations regarding Griezmann's potential move to Atletico Madrid. Los Cochineros are set to pay around 20 million euros for the forward with an additional 4 million euros in variables. There is no doubt on the fact that Matteo Alemani has been the brain behind some key crucial transfer activity for Barcelona. Of course, this summer we had a lot of um, activity to do, buying and selling players, which to an extent Barcelona did a great job, you know, to offload unwanted stars and bringing in some good players as well, even though the season has not still been the best, but Alemani of course have been doing a great job so far since appointed as sporting director he makes some very crucial decisions when it comes to transfers which helps barcelona a lot of course he's trying to justify some sales that barca have made in recent years talking about coutinho um, who went to aston villa in the month of january talking about Griezmann, whose sale is also being um it, it is it is inevitable because they have already agreed a price with Atletico Madrid worth 20 million plus 4 in variables. Of course, according to what Alemani is saying, those are sales that Barca consider them very important considering that those two players, their salaries were really, really huge at the, you know, in, on the wage bill of the club, which is appropriate for them to do that. And also talking about the sale of pierre Marico Bameyang in the summer, which came as a surprise to many Barca fans, but of course, Alemani tried to justify why it was also necessary to do so. Sportingly, normally it was not the best to sell Aubameyang, but the fact that Lewandowski is there in the team could have meant that Aubameyang likely to spend his time on the bench and he's not that kind of a player that you will want to waste his talent on the bench all the time. You know, so, so far Alemani is doing a great job being a sporting director of Barcelona. I think Barcelona have made some very key moves and Alemani have had a say in some very very important and crucial transfer activity for the team and he continues to be the brain behind most of this transfer look at players like pedri pedri if not of matteo alemani pedri could have not been at barca you know so there are some very very important things that alemani bring to the table when it comes to showing out his role as a sporting director of the team 
as he knows a lot about how to do things right just to ensure that the club does not suffer in the long run. So it's great to see him explaining some of these um, sales that Barca have made in recent years and talking about the benefits of those sales and of course the, the, the disadvantages which is also very important to justify those. So we hope that you know we continue to scout the market for far more better players with time. Then on to the next story of discussion, Frankie de Jong looked exit bound for the majority of the summer transfer window, with Manchester United in poor position to sign him. The Red Devils had offered up to 85 million euros, including add-ons for the player and were later joined by Chelsea in the race. However, neither move transpired, with reports claiming that de Jong only wanted to succeed at Barcelona. Further, he was still owed money by the club as part of his deferred wages which made his departure rather difficult. Today, speaking as part of the General Assembly, club president Joan Laporta talked about Frankie de Jong, claiming that they had some big offers from the Premier League. We received many bids from Premier League for Frankie de Jong, but we decided to keep a quality player like Frankie de Jong, he said, as quoted by Fabrizio Romano. It was also reported that Barca were keen on selling de Jong due to his contract, which more than doubled his salary this season. The alternative, the alternative, however, was to get the young to reduce his salary. That would allow the club to retain his services while complying with financial fair play. Laporta being the rumors of Barcelona forcing the young to take pay cut and threatening legal action, he said, We have never forced any player to reduce his salary. We are just asking them in a pacific way, he said. Whether or not it was Barcelona who chose to retain the young or the Dutchman who decided to stay with will remain a mystery. It is well known though that the former Ajax man has lost his place in the starting 11 to Gavi. He was also injured during the previous week, missing games against Mallorca and Inter Milan. With the young Spaniard looking overworked and slightly out of form, the young has the perfect chance to climb back on the ladder and convince manager Javi ahead of a hectic calendar. Frankie continued to face some kind of a difficult season at Barcelona, not being a preferred choice again like he used to. And it's strange, right? It's really strange how things are going for him. And getting Laporta speaking in that uh, assembly yesterday about these issues of Frankie de Jong, how he was linked to United Chelsea, which made a lot of, a lot of headlines last um, summer. It's really strange to see what Laporta is saying here. Like, who are we choosing to believe? Laporta is saying something so controversial to what was reported by all the medias around the world. And saying that they have never pressured Frankie Leon to leave, they received big offers, but they decided that Frankie Leon should stay. Like everything is just as if somebody is lying brutally somewhere. So anyway, let's see how it goes. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.